and welcome into episode 39 of the H&M Trucking Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marcus. That part hasn't changed and nothing else has changed either. We're still here for you every single week. We've got a new episode on Wednesday morning, so make sure you click that subscribe button and share this podcast with all of your fellow drivers out there. Hammer down on them, man. Key down on them, I guess, is what I should tell you to say, because you can tell them over the CB. Hey, what are you doing right now? I'm bored. Well, just me. I'm listening to the 39th episode of the H&M Trucking Podcast, and that means that there's 38 other episodes for you to listen to, not mentioning the 18 episodes of Unplugged OTR that we did before we started the H&M Trucking Podcast. It's all on the same feed. So for those of you that have heard every single one of them, and those of you that have only heard some but are here today, and those of you that are here today for your very first time, I thank you for joining us here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. Today's podcast is jam-packed with a variety of things to talk about. We had on H&M driver Teddy Arnold last week, and he shared with us about some awesome charities that he's either been involved with or champions with every breath in his lungs. And I actually, thanks to Teddy, was able to get in touch with the president of the Truckers Christmas Group, Mark Abraham, and we're going to talk to him here just in a second right around the corner and really get a, a true feel for what they're doing over there at the Truckers Christmas Group. So stay tuned for that. I've also got some uh, breaking news, uh, change.org petition that I think is pretty cool. And we've got a missing trucker in Iowa, you guys. I know that you've probably heard about this. As it's been some pretty big news over the last couple of weeks. I will bring you the latest on what is going on with that case according to the law enforcement divisions that are investigating it. And on top of that, we've got an awesome little roundtable discussion with a front office member and an H&M driver. First time we've ever had one of those where it's a, uh, you know, we had Tim Kruger from JFL and Tom Woods uh, H&M driver on together. And it was cool because Tim used to be Tom's dispatcher, but they don't work together anymore. This is the first time that I'm going to have a front office staff member and a driver that are currently in their roles, uh, chatting it up, chewing the fat, shooting the shit about a few different things. I've got a few jumping off points, to be honest with you, but really, I love getting into a conversation and then just letting it grow into a thing. So we'll get to that all coming up right around the corner here, though. We're going to talk to Mark Abraham from Truckers Christmas Group. Thanks for being here. Assault that subscribe button. It helps us out greatly. It's episode 39 of the H&M Trucking Podcast, and we're off and rolling. From Omaha, Nebraska, to whatever lane you're driving, this is the H&M Trucking Podcast with your host, Marcus Bridges. Joining me next year on the H&M Trucking Podcast, we've got a very special little segment uh, that's going to piggyback off of a segment that we did last week where we talked to Teddy Arnold H&M trucking driver about some charities that he's very interested and involved with. Well, today I'm going to take that one step further because I've got the man that's got all the answers from truckerschristmasgroup.org here with me. Please welcome to the show, Mark Abraham. Mark, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me on your show. Can you tell me a little bit about the Truckers Christmas Group and how this whole thing got started, Mark? Sure. The ones who founded it were all on a, uh, a social trucking group, and one of the guys on there, and he was having a particularly good year, Wayne Horton. He was having a good year, and he was wondering, you know, well, what what can we do for these people who aren't having it so good? And he didn't know anything about, you know, how to put something like that together. So he put the word out there that he'd like to do something, and, and uh a committee was formed, and that first year was pretty rough, but they got it done, and uh, they they helped some trucky families. Um, at that time, it was a five hundred dollar unrestricted grant to help each trucky family that they were able to help. And you guys have helped a lot of families uh, from then to now. I understand there's been. Uh, I mean, that was back in. Well, it says here on your website you're in your 12th year right now helping, and uh, I've also seen here that you've 
you've helped over 150 trucking families. That's phenomenal. And especially around the holidays. Um, talk to me a little bit, Mark, about your selection process. How do you find these drivers that need help? And then how do you select them based on a, a pool of nominations that you receive? Okay, sure. You can go to our website and, and fill out the application to nominate a trucking family. It can be your own family. Um, it can be somebody else's family. You go there and you fill out the application and put as much information as you know. And we'll take it from there. We get the application and then I send out email letting the people know, hey, you've been nominated to possibly receive some assistance this year for Christmas. And we have a conference call, try to verify as much of the information as we can. And and we make sure we get a copy of their CDL so that we make sure that they are a trucking family because that's who we help. <laughs> right. And from there, the elves, as we like to call them, they go through all those applications and they give each one of them a score of one to 10. And that's, that's based on several factors, integrity, how honest they were, how good their work ethic is and, and things like that. Some of the, some of the people take into account whether they have children or not. Some of us don't. We, we kind of leave it open on what you make that judgment call on. So then all the scores for that application are averaged together. So that what that gives us is each application has a number. When we have the Santa call, we can start with the highest number, and we can go down the list calling each family until we run out of money. Because we aren't the government, so we have to stop <laughs> that point. <laughs> yeah, no money printers over at uh, truckerschristmasgroup.org, I imagine there, Mark. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's yeah. I, I love what you guys do here, I think. And that's why, you know, I wanted to create some room for you on not just one, but two episodes, because I really want uh, you drivers out there that are listening or uh, other people, you know, four wheelers as well. Maybe you're working for a trucking company, whatever the case may be. You got to run over to the website once again, truckerschristmasgroup.org and just do a little bit of research. As Teddy told us last week, it's always important to research the charities that you want to give to to make sure that you're not just padding the pockets of the people that are putting this charity together. And I see here on the website that you're a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, that's that's great news because that right there is one real big uh, thing for people to look for that legitimizes you guys as a charity. I mean, you don't even have to look down the page far enough to know that you guys have, have helped out and given out over $90,000 at this point to help families. What you do here is just, uh, it warms my heart, Mark, and I want to give you the floor to say anything that you'd like to say to potential donors or people that are down on their luck, maybe looking for a little bit of help this Christmas Make your make your statement here for us and, and why people should check out truckerschristmasgroup.org. Okay. Well, first of all, going on the uh, theme of looking for a good charity, nobody is paid at this charity. We're a small charity, and all of us are volunteers. 99% of us are, are truck drivers, and, and the, the other 1% is involved in the trucking industry. We're all out here doing this from the caps of our trucks. We try to use the resources we're given as wisely as possible, trying to keep those expenses down. Other than that, I pay for the uh, phone service myself and, and office supplies and, and all that, so the charity doesn't have to pay for those. If you know of a family that is in need, fill out an application, even, even if you think their their case is as strong as others then you can fill out an application and, and the voting process you know hey if, if we do, if you want the money to help somebody who needs it more then the voting process will take care of that and if we get lucky enough uh, like in the last two or three years that we have enough to cover everybody then you know hey they, they still get help so uh, that's what I love about the way the system works and this particular year, I have never seen it this bad before. Uh, we've, we've got 14, 15, I think we're up to 16 applications this year, which, which is about normal. Um, we've seen as high as 25 and as low as 
maybe 14 on a low year. So we're riding right in there on the amount of applications, and I'm sure a few more will come in. But we're running way behind on funding this year. Uh, we've only got enough to help about four of those families. And, you know, that really hurts to, to talk to the families, get to know them, and get to know their situation, and then not be able to call them on the Santa call. Yeah, it's it, that that so, seems like a real yeah. tough part of the whole deal there, Mark, is when when the donations don't come in, uh, that that makes something that should be very good and make everybody feel good, uh, feel a little bit bad. But um, that's why we're doing this sure. right now. Go and donate. If you've got a dollar, if you've got 10 bucks, uh, you know, this is the season of giving and we really want to spur some donations for you so that. Maybe you could help a couple more families out there because I think it's been a hard year across the trucking industry. I think everybody's struggling right now. Absolutely. And you can also go there and do your grocery shopping. You know, if you want to buy the, the trucker in your family, uh, something trucking involved, then check out our online store. Just go to the website. We've, we've got an online store there where people who uh, provide uh, chemical treatment for your uh, DEF and fuel and oh uh, we've got like the uh, road some of the road pro stuff so you can get like a 12 volt less box 7 or things like that you know things that, that a, a truck driver could use so you could do your Christmas shopping there and that helps us out and those companies like road pro they, they donate those products uh, for us to sell. So we get the money and, and they send the product out to the, to the person who bought it. So that's great. And I'm scrolling through the, uh, through the shop right now. You've got a slow cooker on there, a Bluetooth headset. Uh, you can do your shopping just like you said, if you're trying to help out, but, uh, maybe you don't have a lot to give. Well, do your shopping right there on the Christmas shop at truckerschristmasgroup.org and you'll help out, uh, the foundation as well. Uh, Mark, we're up against the clock here, so I'm going to let you go, but I really appreciate you coming by. Once again, I want to let the listeners know truckerschristmasgroup.org is the website. And uh, thank you, Mark, for for all the good that you do in the trucking industry. I know you're out there rolling and uh, just trying to do your job and make a living for your family. But uh, reaching a hand out uh, for some people that are on hard times is a very noble cause. And and uh, it's people like you that make uh this time of year, a very heartwarming uh, time of year. And uh, this this group of truckers that I've gotten to speak to and I've, I've gotten to get to know um, during the course of this podcast has really touched my heart because I feel like there's a lot of them out there that are just like you. They are uh, out for the betterment of their fellow man and uh, they just want to do some good. And Truckers Christmas Group is a great way to go about doing some good this holiday season. Thank you for your time. No problem. That's Mark Abraham from truckerschristmasgroup.org. We'll be right back here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. All right. Now, before we get to our discussion today, uh, I've got a couple of things here on the agenda that I want to get to. And one of them uh, is is really cool. I Actually, Eve sent me this uh, just a, a week or so ago, and I haven't had a chance to get to it yet. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about this petition on change.org that Transforce Staffing and Recruiting has started. You know, on this podcast, we have done a couple of features on the women that make up the trucking industry or the transportation industry, more accurately. And it's always been really cool because we've had some uh, some great women make awesome contributions to this show, uh, whether they be drivers or front office staff. And I've always wondered if we could get more women to make a contribution to this show from the truck driver side of things. I we've we've got so many great women working at H and M, and I know there's great women out there driving too. I haven't got a chance to talk to many of them at this point, but uh, I do have a list of a few extras that we're going to get in touch with. We're going to have on the show uh, pretty frequently in the coming months, and I'm very excited about that because I think it's important that we show both sides of things. Of course, there's going to be a lot of similarities between what men and women deal with out there on the road when they're doing the same job. 
But there's also a completely different perspective. You know, when we talk about the parking issue that faces the transportation industry, one of the things that comes up about that is that these need to be safe parking facilities, not just parking facilities. You can't just slap a concrete pad along the side of I-5 out in the middle of nowhere in the dark and expect it to be safe for anyone, let alone for the women that are out there traveling the road. Okay, so sometimes women have to think a little bit harder about those types of things, their safety. Uh, They get, you know, we've we've had it on this podcast before where they say, look, I've been catcalled from time to time. I've had some people say some inappropriate things to me at the fuel pump. Now, fortunately, when we hear those stories, a lot of times what we also hear from these ladies is that, listen, there was a bunch of other good drivers, men that stepped up and told this guy to, you know, buzz off or whatever the case may be, uh, which is good, but it's still not great. Okay, so I know that the things that uh, a lot of the women deal with out there on the road can be a little daunting for sure. And obviously, with women only making up 14 percent of the uh, driver population, Their contributions are absolutely needed for this industry, but it shows a bit of a skew in uh, the the gender that is most populated in this industry. So I found this uh, because Eve sent it to me, like I said, and I want to read you this change.org petition uh, because with the recent release of the Barbie movie, I think it's very well timed and who knows it might have an uh, an effect on the industry that is uh, is a lot bigger than what any of us expect. So here is what the change.org petition says. Once again, started by Transforce Staffing and Recruiting. Throughout the years, Barbie has explored a myriad of careers and showcased to young girls that they can be anything they set their minds to. From flying high as a pilot in the U.S. Air Force to navigating outer space as an astronaut and speeding around tracks as a race car driver, Barbie has done it all. In fact, Barbie has held over 200 professions over the decades, proving there is no dream too big or too small. But there's one horizon she's yet to explore, and that's one that is essential to keeping our world connected and our economy moving. Truck driving. Today, women make up, as I said, just 14% of the trucking industry workforce. To say that their contributions are vital would be an understatement. We want to recognize these women and show young girls that the transportation industry has a seat for them, too, whether that's behind the wheel of a box truck, a big rig, or behind the desk that reads CEO. We ask for your support in making Barbie one of America's most essential workers, a truck driver. Now, right now, as it stands, when I'm recording this on December the 14th, Uh, Their next goal is 1,000 signatures. They're up to 956, and 150 people have signed this thing today. So uh, head on over to change.org, and what you're going to want to search is help us launch a truck driver Barbie. Um, Really cool petition here, I think. You know, it's fun. It's something that will get little girls interested in truck driving, possibly. I mean, that's the whole point. We had Barbie going to space. We had Barbie in a lab coat. We've got nurses and doctors and business leaders and entertainment uh, professionals. The whole point behind Barbie, at least what I got from the Barbie movie and, uh, you know, my sister played with Barbies for my entire childhood. Barbie was always meant to empower little, little girls and make them understand that they are valuable in whatever field that they decide to jump into and not only valuable, but sometimes and and a lot of times can exceed their own expectations for themselves uh, just because they have the confidence and the ability to jump into these positions that don't often feature women. So once again, I think this is a really cool, uh, um, a really cool thing that they've got going on right now. Uh, the Barbies in trucking campaign, of course, aims to break gender stereotypes, promote diversity, and encourage young girls to dream big, fostering a future where women play an even more significant role in the transportation sector. Cool stuff there. Once again, head on over to change.org. If you want to put your signature on that, I'm sure that they would be happy. And who knows? uh, In the future, we might see a whole line of Barbie big rigs. I would love that. Uh, Because you know what? It would represent H&M trucking quite well. You know, we are the rainbow fleet out here. We got a lot of awesome colors. And you can bet that Mattel, if they were putting out a Barbie big rig, they would be bringing the heat. Okay, Uh, who knows what logo would be on the front of that thing? But the color schemes are going to be out of this world. And uh, I would really enjoy seeing something like that. Because, listen, I've only got nephews. Okay, a couple of boys. I'll tell you what. 
it doesn't matter what color the big rig is. If you give them a big rig to play with as a toy, they're playing with it. They're going to take that thing out. They're going to run it over the dirt and the mud and the rocks and everything, and they're going to have the time of their lives. So, Mattel, I'm on board. My signature's already on the petition. Let's do this thing. And uh, once again, search Truck Driver Barbie over there at change.org, and you'll be able to put your name on that petition as well. Uh, We're going to switch gears here to something a little bit more serious. I shouldn't say a little bit more serious. This is something a lot of more serious. So I'm going to have producer Mike toss in just a little bit of transition music here because things are about to get heavy. And with heavy things often comes the breaking news button. Probably shouldn't call this breaking news at this point in time anymore, but anytime I get to press my button, I'm going to press it because I just don't get to press them that often. And I also think that hearing that kind of cues you into what's going on. You hear that uh, that little intro there and you decide, oh, wow, the something's up. I need to listen. At least that's the reason that I have the button. I, if it's not doing that to you, maybe we can find another button, you know, something like maybe the eagle screech. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to cope a little bit with bad news here uh, with some humor, and it never works, but it's something that I've been um, committed to doing my entire life. I don't know any other way. So apologies for that. I'm taking uh, the information from this story from CDLLife.com, but you can find info on this story from a myriad of local publications in the Iowa area. Here comes some from this uh, from this news release here. Once again, I've got this on December 11th from CDL Life. It says the Sac County Sheriff's Office shared many new details over the weekend about the state of the investigation into a missing Iowa truck driver. Now, some of you have probably heard about this. On December 9th, Sac County Sheriff Ken McClure provided a thorough update on the investigation into the disappearance of trucker David Schultz who has been missing for about three weeks. Uh, Here's the release. November 21st, 2023 at 2.23 p.m., Sarah Schultz, after learning her husband David had not dropped off a load of pigs at Weichmann's hog buying station in Sac City as scheduled that day, called the Lakeview police and reported her husband missing after she was unable to make contact with him by telephone. David Schultz left his home around 7 p.m. on the evening of November 20th, Schultz was scheduled to pick up a load of pigs in the Eagle Grove area and transport the pigs to Sac City. At 3.04 p.m. on November 21st, a Sac County Secondary Road employee reported to the Sac County Sheriff's Office that there was a semi-tractor trailer parked on the traveled portion of the road at the intersection of D-15, which is 190th Street, and N-14, which is Union Avenue. It was reported that the semi had been sitting there since early morning. Responding deputies determined that it was David Schultz's semi. The truck was shut off, and inside, the deputies found David Schultz's wallet and cell phone. David Schultz's driver's license was in the wallet. Investigators would later learn that nothing was missing from his wallet. Over the next several hours, law enforcement searched the intermediate area on foot and with a canine. Sac County Sheriff's Office requested assistance from the Iowa State Patrol Air Wing Unit. An airplane was dispatched from Iowa City that was equipped with forward-looking infrared. A state uh, patrol pilot flew the surrounding area and did not detect a heat signature that would be consistent with a person. For the next two days, law enforcement, area firefighters, and volunteers expanded on the ground search on foot and with the use of drones. Nothing of significant value to the investigation was located. Uh, Detectives from the Sac County Sheriff's Office and Lakeview Police traveled to the Eagle Grove area with assistance from Wright County Sheriff's Office, located the hog confinement that Schultz was scheduled to load from. Load crew members were interviewed and load records were obtained. Investigators learned that Schultz had picked up his load but had been late to arrive and he was the last truck loaded. He left the confinement at about 10.50 p.m. Investigators obtained video footage of David Schultz at 11.15 p.m. on November 21st at the mile marker 126 truck stop east of Fort Dodge on Highway 20. Schultz was there for 16 minutes before leaving the truck stop. He is then seen on a Department of Transportation camera on Highway 20 west of mile marker 126 headed west. Uh, This was the last time David Schultz was seen. 
Cell phone data obtained from David Schultz's phone corroborates this timeline. Cell phone data also shows investigators that Schultz travels across the highway to the intersection of Highway 20 and Highway 71. Uh, There was not any usable video from the Department of Transportation camera at Highway 4 and Highway 20, and there is no video of Schultz stopping at the truck stop on Highway 4. Cell phones show that Schultz's phone arrives at Highway 20 and Highway 71 at about 12.18 a.m., The data shows the phone traveling north where the truck was found. Data suggests the truck may have been there since 1240 a.m. on November 21st, 2023. Video surveillance from an area business was obtained near Weichmann Hog Buying Station. This video shows that David Schultz never made it to Weichmann's. Law enforcement has searched for additional video footage from Eagle Grove to Fort Dodge, but has yet to locate any of use. Uh, The Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation has assisted with a forensic search of David's phone. They have also confirmed that David was not or has not legally gone through a U.S. border crossing. Information was received that a person named David Schultz had a one way flight from Minneapolis to Phoenix, Arizona on the late afternoon of November 21st, 2023. However, in working with Minneapolis Airport Police and the airline, it was determined after viewing video footage of the gate and receiving ticketing information that it was not the David Schultz that is missing. Uh, DCI continues to assist in the examination of other digital evidence that has been obtained or requested through a subpoena or search warrant. Over 100,000 acres have been searched at this time by the United Cajun Navy and many volunteers. As of this time, Uh, David Schultz has not been located. Agencies that have assisted in Sac County Sheriff's Office, uh, Lakeview Police Department, and Sac County's Attorney's Office are the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation, Iowa State Patrol, Wright County Sheriff's Office, and the Minneapolis, Minnesota Police. This is the important part here. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Sac County Sheriff's Office at 712-662-7127 or get in touch with your local law enforcement agency. David Schultz is 53 years old. He weighs 180 pounds and stands 5 foot 11 tall. Authorities in Sac County, Iowa are looking for David Schultz. Police say he was last heard from in the early morning hours of Tuesday, November 21st. Now, drivers, uh, I'm, I'm talking to you on a fleet podcast of uh, from a fleet that is located in Omaha, Nebraska, which is a stone's throw away from Iowa as far as states are concerned. I'm, I'm not as familiar with this area in Sac City and, and Fort Dodge that they're speaking of, but I know that a lot of you guys are. I know sitting here saying these these roads and these highways and these intersections and these milepost markers, you guys know exactly Uh, where David went missing, or many of you do. I know that this is really weird to ask, especially on this podcast, but think back. If you were in that area November 21st through November 23rd, if you saw anything suspicious, this hog truck was fully loaded, you guys. He had picked up the pigs, and he just stopped his truck in the middle of the road, shut it off, left his wallet and his cell phone in it, and disappeared into thin air okay now i don't want to um i don't want to make any assumptions here all right this guy david schultz he could have left on his own volition he could have just decided he didn't want his life anymore and picked up and left but i have been following this story uh for a couple of weeks now and if you listen to the things that his wife has to say about him he was a family man he had children at home this is not a guy that's just going to pick up and and jump off the grid, uh, especially with a fully loaded truck. So maybe we're looking at something here where David met with foul play. I think that's speculation at this point, as if the police have any information that suggests that they aren't releasing it. And, and that's probably uh, that's probably the right idea here. Um, I, I don't know if many of you listening to this are true crime buffs by any stretch of the imagination. I listen to a ton of true crime podcasts, read books. I watch series and documentaries all the time. And there's one constant thing that comes up with these cases, and that is if the police release too much information, they get way too many tips, they can't follow up on them, and it makes the case even harder to solve. So 
what I'm imploring you to do as a driver that may have been in the area uh, sometime around when David went missing is to think back through the annals of your mind. I know, I listen, I couldn't tell you what I recorded for this podcast yesterday. I understand how hard it must be. Every mile that you drive out there goes into the ether because it's just another minute in another day at work. It's hard to remember these things, but think hard if you were in the area. Anything suspicious that you saw with the truck stop. Maybe you saw him at the mile, uh, mile marker 126 truck stop there. Um, maybe you saw him shortly after that. Maybe you didn't see him at all, but you saw something that was suspicious. Any of this stuff is going to be uh, useful for law enforcement, at least to rule things out, if nothing else. Your tip might not solve the case, but your tip might send them down the correct path when they could have been following the incorrect path. So anything that you have, once again, David Schultz, 53 years old, standing 5 foot 11 and weighing 180 pounds. Any information that you have should be relayed to the Sac County Sheriff's Office at 712-662-7127. That is your news uh, for this episode of the H&M Trucking Podcast, and you can guarantee with as close to home as this one is, we will be following the case of David Schultz uh, missing from his truck on November 23rd, 2023. Uh, we've got a great discussion lined up here. I've got Brenda Hampton, the Hopper Division Manager, as well as H&M Driver Loris Axt coming up right now for a little bit of a roundtable discussion on many things trucking. I'm so excited about this. Joining me now on the H&M Trucking Podcast, I've got Hopper Division Manager Brenda Hampton here with me. Brenda, thank you so much for taking the time today. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. And also joining me, I've got H&M driver Loris Axt on the other line. Loris, thank you for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you both on here at the same time. You know, I really am looking forward to having more conversations with more than one person at once because uh, it just it, it it makes it a little bit easier to conversate and having two points of view is always good because, uh, you know, I like to pretend that I know everything and I clearly don't. Uh, so getting a couple of you guys on that know a lot more about what we're talking about here uh, is great. So I just want to jump right into it. Um, Brenda, if you could start off, talk to me a little bit about how uh, you and Loris came to work together and uh, what your relationship is like uh, working together. Well, Loris is not hard to get along with. Uh, I don't think he's got an enemy in the world. Uh, great guy, performs well understands both sides of it, you know, always understandable. I've been working with Loris. Man, Loris, how long has it been? I'm guessing around 10 years, Brenda, close to Ooh, it. Man, that does sound good. And and Loris, uh, working with Brenda, talk to me about that. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, Brenda is a representation of uh, the dispatchers that I have really uh, grown to a uh, respect. Um, I've, now I've been with another company. This, uh, with Brenda, is a group here. Uh, they're very understanding. They are very knowledgeable. They understand too that, uh, you know, if I run into inclement weather or, uh, uh get delayed, everything's laid out and, and uh, very well planned. So, you know, I, I really didn't want to bring that much butter to the plate, but I have to. So, anyway, it's been a great relationship. Oh, Brenda, it, is, it has. It really has. And uh, you're very wonderful. The whole Hopper division, to me, is, is like family. You know, uh, we could talk. You all know what's going on with me. I know what's going on with you. And it makes our relationship professionally, productively, so much uh, better. Now, Brenda, when you look at the Hopper division as a whole, uh, what you know, you're you're the manager. You're the you're the one that they're all looking to. What do you uh, aim to bring the Hopper division as the leader of the group? Because I know that it's a pretty tight knit group there. Uh, and just talking to you when I was in uh, Nebraska a little while back, I could tell that you take real pride in your team and that they're all uh, as close to you as what Loris is. 
what what's your philosophy for running the hopper division and and how do you kind of bring that to the to the table every day well you know it always starts back to your peers um i had good peers here to look at char was one of the best ones taught me good you know morals and values for these drivers and everything opens your eyes to certain things that you got to be aware of and understand so my goal here is to make every driver feel like they're they're not a number they're a driver they're our friend they're our uh, extended family um you know just like everyone in here i always want them to feel like they're family they do matter no matter what happens or what's going on so loris actually touched on something when he was uh when he was buttering you up there and uh, i do want to get to that because <laughs> loris you mentioned you know if you're delayed and uh lately i've been pulling a lot of content from the atri's top industry issues facing the transportation industry uh, this study came out here just a couple of months ago, and they've pulled a lot of drivers and a lot of uh, transportation industry employees to find out what it is that they think the top 10 things facing the industry are. And one of the things on there actually coming in at number nine on the list is detention and delay at customer facilities. How often, Loris, do you deal with that out there on the road where you cannot help but getting backed up at a customer? Well, uh, it's kind of funny you brought it up. Today, uh, actually, I was bumped. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It could have been worse. But I was in line to get ready, and then the, uh, one of the workers came out, and they said, oh, we're so sorry, but we need to have this corn load in before your rice load. So I had to uh, get out of line. And, you know, that's not, not too bad, but we just have to be uh, customer-oriented. But, you know, yeah, I suppose... You know, a guy could get angry or whatever, but you can't really do that because these, these are the people that are, uh, we, we need to keep them. But, uh, there are certain times where the machinery breaks down or, uh, they have lack of help to one reason or another. All of a sudden, you're sitting there for, uh, more than, uh, uh well, almost even a day or two, you can sit there, uh, just because of, uh, uh one thing to another. But one thing I've always noticed, <laughs> ever since I've been with H&M, is that the company always respects that and treats it and, and, and treats us well for it with the detention pay. Uh, Brenda, uh, do you want to take over from here? Well, sure. Um, just feeding off of lures there, um, yeah, we pride ourselves. If the drivers do their side, we take care of them. There's nothing worse than sitting somewhere thinking, you know, I'm just sitting here wasting my time. So we do as much as we can, you know, to uh, make that driver feel like your time is not wasted. We, we're trying to take care of you. For sure. And it, it seems like based on this uh, this study that this has been a longstanding issue. This is something that's come up in these yearly reports from ATRI multiple different times. Um, but there has been a drop. Last year, it was number six on the list for the for the top 10 issues. This year, it's number nine. And uh, there's some thoughts within the Research Institute that one of the things that made that drop on the list is that, uh, you know, maybe the softened freight demand has reduced the time spent loading and unloading freight. Uh, Loris, can you speak to that at all? It's been a little bit of a slower year out here. Uh, everybody's feeling it that's a part of the industry. I know we talk about it on this podcast a lot. Do you think that delays have been a little bit less frequent over the past year or have you been just kind of feeling the same about them. No, I honestly, I haven't really uh, noticed uh, that per se, primarily when we are uh, uh, assigned to a certain time and day, uh, pretty much those are met. The, the only concerns are, is what I mentioned earlier, if the machinery broke down or some kind of delay with person. So those are the only things that I can think of. Now, we're, we're heading towards the Christmas season. And so things are a little bit slower. Everyone wants it to go and celebrate. Uh, and so you don't have as much freight uh, moving, and I'm guessing. I haven't really noticed all that much, but I'm sure there is probably uh, some truth to what you're saying there. Brenda, I can't help you out here. <laughs> yeah, how yeah. about, uh, let's talk about that, Brenda, like division-wide. Obviously, Loris, you know, he's out there in his truck. He sees it from his perspective, but... How's how are delays as far as the entire division is concerned uh, right now, maybe compared to this time last year, if you could. Well, 
looking from my eyes, if you've got a good set of drivers like Loris, you know, they give you a good AT- ETA, they're going to show up. That helps us better off with the customers, helps us push freight better. You know, it, it is tight, but we pride ourselves on pushing freight. So we really do try and, uh, you know, narrow down the wait time of a reload and push it out as fast as we can. As far as waiting at a customer, you know, they're paying more for us too. So they're not wanting us to set either anymore. So I think that's why we're seeing more of a movement on that. Well, that's good. I mean, I, I would like to see this drop off the list all the way if we could, obviously, because um, it, it seems to be, you know, it might not be one of the biggest issues, but it's an issue nonetheless. And Obviously, you're never going to completely eliminate it, but to have it drop from this top 10 list and not have it be something that's uh, concerning drivers, you know, and and dispatchers every single day of every week would be uh, a great thing. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I Loris did mention at the very beginning of the call before we started recording that uh, you got to go on a, on a nice vacation to the Dominican Republic recently, uh, Brenda, and you didn't take Loris with you. I expected a little bit more yeah. vitriol on this call. Oh, I ex- about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think the, the reason I bring that up is because I hear a great working relationship here already. You know, we're only about halfway through this thing. And uh, you guys seem to have things really well worked out. I feel like if I hadn't have prepared either one of you for this call, we'd still be getting the same information out of it. And I, I think that that is a good uh, kind of jumping off point to our next issue that we wanted to talk about uh, from the list here today, which is driver retention. Um, driver retention came in on the list at number eight. Uh, it's down a couple of spots as well. So something that isn't as big of a concern as it was a year ago but H&M seems to do a really good job with driver retention. And uh, Brenda, I actually want to start with you here. Uh, as far as driver retention is concerned, how do you within your division approach that and try to keep your good drivers like Loris rolling so that they're happy and that they won't jump ship and head to the next best thing? Well, I think uh, if you treat them right and do the right thing and take care of them, you're going to see even in the bad times, that the good ones will stick with you. And Loris, as far as you said, you've been working for with uh, with Brenda for a decade now. So obviously, we f- we here at H and M, and I'm speaking for everybody, like I obviously shouldn't do, but I'm going to because it's the podcast. Uh, you're you're sticking around. You're not going anywhere. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Uh, they have a chain on me on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, very nearest. I can't move. No, but, but let me let me also add what. Let me also interject one thing. Also, we have great customers, and Brenda will definitely agree with uh, with me on this one. So, uh, some of the times when there are some delays and stuff like that, uh, it seems like uh, we, we do work very well together. But but Brenda, you agree with me? We have great customers that that, that use our business continuously. Yeah, yeah, I do, and I think the quality of that we bring to them not only like office quality but our driver quality and so uh, you it sounds like customer service even though you know a lot of a lot of people when i talk to them just in general that don't have anything to do with the transportation industry wouldn't think that there's a very big customer service aspect in uh, a professional driver's day-to-day but something that i've learned over the course of the last year doing this podcast is that customer service is a huge part of it I imagine, you know, Loris, you mentioned you could get mad when you get delayed at a customer, but, you know, it's not really going to change anything for you. Having that uh, whole kill them with kindness attitude and and showing up at customers with a smile and, and being the best possible customer service representative that you can is vitally important to the job, isn't it? Well, that is to the company, too. You know, uh, when I left today, the, uh, the, the manager came out and, and said, thank you for my, my patience. Well, the, the way I look at it, if I want to get mad, that's crazy. I'm not deserting myself. I mean, just get myself upset. Things happen. And, and when you have an understanding, sometimes there is a chance that you can see what the problem is and point it out, and all of a sudden, voila, you know, you can actually help the folks out. So I always try to keep an eye out on that if there's something I can do to, to uh, help uh, our customer. You know, better deserve. I think that's, that's real too. Actually. Yeah. 
I think that's great advice. And, and, you know, it's, listen, not everybody has the type of day every single day where it's easy to go out there and be the best customer service rep that you can. I've worked in customer service before. I know how that goes. Um, but it, you know, I got to take a big hats off to the drivers that I speak to on this podcast, because it, it does sound like you guys keep that at the forefront of your mind. And I think that's probably why you have uh, such good customers is because they know that H and M's going to treat them right. H and M's going to have their back, and uh, they're also not going to beat them over the head with the clipboard when something goes wrong at the facility. So, you know, I, I have to commend you guys for that. And as as we kind of move towards the end of our conversation here, I want to just open the floor up to both of you. And and Brenda, we'll start with you here. Is there anything that you would like to say to Loris or to your team of drivers at large? Any issues that you've got going on right now? Anything that you want to pass on to them? It's literally open season for you, Brenda. So take the floor. Talk to me a little bit as if I'm not even here, if that's possible. Yeah, no. The things that I need from the drivers right now with the freight being low and slow, be patient with us, be kind to people, we'll be kind back, and we'll get through it. Short and sweet. I love it. And I just don't see Brenda, you you strike me as such a mild mannered person. I, I don't see even you. You've never been mad, have you? Have you ever been mad at anything? And be <laughs> honest with me. You know, uh, on a business level, I, I've been here long enough where you just got to everything's got a, a solution, you know, um, no need to get worked up, you know, waste your time on something. Think it out, work it out, and move on. You know, I getting mad is not going to get you anywhere. I've heard that over and over again uh, from both sides of the coin here, whether it be drivers or or people in the front office. And I think that that's really great advice. Uh, Loris, on to you. Is there anything you'd like to tell your fellow drivers, uh, people at the front office, anybody that might be listening right now, um, not only in relation to what we've talked to, but open season for you as well, my friend? Well, uh, you had a couple of drivers out before, uh, Chad, Mark, and they've been with us for well, a lot longer than I have. And, uh, you know, I, I watch them, I watch, uh, 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 our guys. And I say overall, we have a very good bunch of people that, uh, I think, uh, the office is very comfortable of having them come into a place, even a new place, uh, representing us in, in a very nice and a professional manner where, uh, you know, residual business is coming back and i think if you provide a uh, a good front and uh you have the uh, uh ability to provide and to keep it you know what to satisfy the customer but satisfy them uh in a in, in a way that they do want you back and, and, and brenda you agree we have a we have especially the, the folks in colorado notice they want us they want us because i think they just know uh, the quality of, of the personnel there. Yes, agreed. So what are you guys getting each other for Christmas? Maybe a, maybe another vacation to the Dominican Republic, Brenda? It sounds like maybe that might be something Loris would be interested in. I, you know, I keep trying to get Loris and Carol to go, but, you know, they won't even buy me a bottle of wine. <laughs> Brenda, Brenda, uh, that'll happen. <laughs> and it's going to be so fine wine. It's not going to be that whatever that best you've been drinking, it's going to be some really good stuff. There's nothing wrong with a jug of Carlo Rossi every now and then, Loris. Because <laughs> <laughs> way over me here now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, you guys, uh, uh, it's been great to talk to you both and have you both come on here and, and play along with me. Uh, as I said, I love having two people on at the same time to get different perspectives, different sides of the coin. Uh, peeking behind the curtain in the cab of the truck and at the office is always going to be something I enjoy doing on this podcast. So I want to thank you both uh, so much for being here. I want to wish you both happy holidays. Uh, Brenda Hampton Van Division Manager, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. You're welcome. And, Loris, you be safe out there, and we'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry thank Christmas you. to you. That's Loris Axe, hopper driver for H&M. Loris, you be safe, as Brenda said. Uh, happy holidays to the both of you, and we'll do this again very soon, all right? Man, on behalf of the H&M Trucking Podcast team, I want to give a huge shout out there to Brenda 
and Loris for bringing their relationship to the front of the H&M Trucking Podcast. Uh, it's amazing to me. You get to hear about all these stories about who people work with and all the great people at H&M Trucking. Uh, but it's really cool when you get two of them on the air at the same time and hear all the great things that they have to say about each other and uh, how well they've worked together over the years and plan to continue working together uh, into the future. So big ups to Brenda and Loris for joining us today. I will be looking to get many more of you drivers on with many more of you front office staff, dispatchers. I'm looking for you. I'm still here knocking on the door. Sherry's coming for you, whether you think she is or not. Maybe you're not even listening to this right now. Somebody will tip you off, though, dispatch. You're on my list, and I'm going to get you. And Sherry's going to help me, and so is Eve. And uh, maybe I even call in the big guns and have James knock on your door. Not really. I'm not going to do that. I don't like to give James extra things to do. He's already got plenty to do. And uh, to be honest with you, there was a while there where we were interviewing him every single week. And uh, I could hear the size getting heavier. So we've tried to give James a little bit of of a break here around the holidays, into the years coming around. There's lots to do. So we're focusing elsewhere. And that means... That my sights are on the dispatchers. So stay tuned in the future. We're going to get them on. If I have to break my own damn arm and just tell them, hey, I broke my arm. Don't you feel sorry for me? Wouldn't you like to come on the podcast? I'll do it. I'm not above pining for sympathy here. OK, uh, for those of you that have come on the podcast in the past, will be on the podcast in the future or just listen to the podcast religiously every week. We appreciate you all here at the H&M Trucking Podcast. Be sure to, as the kids say, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Uh, It helps us all with our metrics. It lets us know who's listening, which is really cool. But it also leaves you anonymous. Like if if you're listening, I don't know that that Mike is listening. I just know that there's a dude in Amarillo, Texas listening, uh, which I think is pretty cool because we've got listens from like Brazil, the United Kingdom. They love us in Sri Lanka. Uh, I again, I don't know why. Uh, But thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I love doing this podcast. I say that all the time. And this episode was an especially great one. Um, It's going to be, I believe, the last episode you get before Christmas. And even if it's not, I don't think it's out of place to say happy holidays to all of you out there. Please be safe. Enjoy the time with your families. And if you're sticking around out there on the road and getting that extra pay bump for working through the holidays, thank you kindly for keeping our country and our economy moving. That's going to wrap it up for me here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. Merry Christmas, cheese bags. Thank you for listening to the H&M Trucking Podcast. Please leave a review, subscribe, and connect with Marcus over at the H&M Trucking social media channels. And if you're considering a job at H&M, find us at hmtrucking.com. Until next time, stay safe and ahead of the curve drivers.